Infantile spasms. So this is a sporadic epilepsy disorder, and it arises normally from a prenatal, perinatal, or early postnatal insult. There are many causes of infantile spasms. Uh, the main cause and most common cause are malformations, including cortical dysplasia being the most common cause. And other causes can be tuberous sclerosis, chromosomal abnormalities, ischemic events, and sometimes when no cause is found, uh, it's called cryptogenic. It normally presents before one year of age in 90% of cases. What will you see? So these infants will have sudden brief spasms of the neck, trunk, or extremities, and they will only last a few seconds. However, these spasms can cluster lasting minutes, and they can have a hundred or more spasms a day. The reason that you don't really see generalized tonic-clonic seizures are because their brains are not developed enough to have those. Uh, you can also see developmental delay or regression, which is a feature that most patients with infantile spasms will have. The EEG is very characteristic. Uh, there's not really a organized background. It's kind of random. There's very high voltage waves, slow waves, and spikes, and that's over the entire EEG. The diagnosis starts with EEG. You can start with a shorter routine EEG, and if you don't see the hypsarrhythmia, you can proceed to an overnight EEG to capture it. Uh, once you've made the diagnosis, uh, you'll want to find the cause. So this will start with an MRI brain to see if there are any lesions causing the disease, and if none, are found, then we'll proceed to metabolic testing and chromosome studies. There are some associated syndromes in which inf infantile spasms are a part of. Uh, West syndrome has the spasms, the hips arrhythmia, as well as developmental delay. Miller-Deeker syndrome is when you have infantile spasms and lysencephaly. Lysencephaly is a failure to develop gyri and sulci, and so you won't have the normal contours of the brain, so it's called smooth brain. Icardi syndrome is an X-linked dominant disorder. It only affects females because the males die. Uh, this will cause infantile spasms and agenesis of the corpus callosum, uh, chorioretinopathy, and intellectual disability. Tuberous sclerosis is also a, a important associated syndrome, specifically because there is a treatment, which we'll talk about in the next slide. So, treatments for infantile spasms. The preferred treatment is corticotropin, or ACTH. However, it is very expensive, and so in some hospitals they use glucocorticoids as the main line treatment. Vigabatrin is specifically very helpful in tuberous sclerosis. It is an irreversible inhibitor of GABA transaminase, uh, which means that it, in it increases GABA in the central nervous system. When starting it, know that it can cause some concentric visual field constriction, so ophthalmology evaluation is normally needed. It can also cause renal dysfunction. The prognosis for infantile spasms is generally not good. In most patients, the spasms disappear by age 3 or 4, however, they will commonly develop other epilepsies, such as Lennox Gesto, which is very hard to treat. Most patients will also have neurodevelopmental disability.